At first glance, this may look like an ordinary family having an ordinary meal. But take a closer look. The main dish is made from nuts, whole cereals and soya, which combined are just as high in protein as meat and considerably cheaper. The vegetables are cooked in vegetable oil, cholesterol free. And the apple dessert is served with cream made from plants too. This meal is accompanied by good helpings of salad and raw fruit. The Vegan Society was formed in 1944 by a group of vegetarians who realized that there was more cruelty involved in milk production than in meat production. This realization shocked them into pioneering a way of life that is of the utmost importance in feeding the hungry millions today and our children tomorrow. Milk production is cruel because calves are taken from their, their mothers soon after birth and sent to the slaughterhouse or veal calf units so that humans can have the milk. Cows often cry for their babies for days and after repeated pregnancies, worn out cows are butchered as soon as their milk yield drops. Many people are turning to veganism today because so many more could be fed if we ate plant foods direct instead of feeding them through animals first, thus increasing the chance of world famine and needless scenes like these. The number of animals deliberately bred by man now outnumbers him. This adds up to a second population explosion which we must stop if we are going to feed people. But can we keep healthy without any animal products? Can we bear and bring up our children healthily and happily? Can we grow crops properly? Can we eat well? This is Jack Sanderson, vegan for over 30 years, Deputy President of the Vegan Society and Secretary of the Research Section of the Vegetarian Society. He is going to take us to meet some people who will answer these questions. This is Dr. Ellis, a consultant haematologist at Kingston Hospital. I understand, Doctor, there have been a number of clinical investigations into the health of vegans. Yes, this is so. During the past 15 years, we have investigated hundreds of vegans and uh, done hundreds of tests on them, but it's not possible to mention more now. To mention a few, firstly we've done clinical examinations on them, x-rays, electrocardiograms, weighed dietary surveys, we've investigated pregnancy in vegan women, we've looked at infants from the age of one year to twenty years, we've uh, done weighed dietary surveys of the intake of diet of vegans, also their efficient, physical efficiency, and many other investigations. Could you tell us the result of your investigation? Uh, very few, yes. Uh, firstly, vegans tend to be lighter than uh, meat eaters, and they also have lower blood cholesterols. This would mitigate against uh, heart disease, as opposed to omnivores who tend to be overweight and have higher blood cholesterols. The vegan physical efficiency is normal. They're normal healthy people. Their disease pattern is the same as omnivores. Would you like to make any conclusions as a result of your investigations? Yes, certainly. Uh, the vegan diet uh, is quite adequate, providing that it is fortified with vitamin B12. And many foods appearing on the market now are fortified with vitamin B12, so this is no longer a problem. They are normal, healthy, happy people whom you couldn't distinguish from omnivores, except that they are slimmer and perhaps smile more. <laughs> This is Tom Sanders, a research nutritionist at Kingston Hospital. Are you convinced that the vegan diet is fully adequate? Yes, I believe it is, uh, provided a mixed diet is eaten. 
one comprising cereals, nuts, pulses, fruit, and uh, vegetables, and it is supplemented with vitamin B12. Uh, dietary inadequacy can arise if too high a proportion of cereals, uh, refined cereals, are eaten, such as polished rice. Otherwise, it's quite adequate. Mm. Uh, do most nutritionists agree with you? Yes, I, I think in the, in the main they do. Uh, the trouble is there aren't many nutritionists. Uh, most of the work in nutrition has been done on animals, and uh, we know more about the laboratory rat uh, than we do about man, which is a great shame. Um, vegans, however, are a very interesting group of people to study, because their diet is very similar to most people in the world, uh, people living in the third world countries of Asia and Africa, who eat very little animal products. And if we look at the disease patterns in these developing countries, they have very little heart disease, very little cancer of the colon, whereas in the Western countries, such as North America in this country, uh, we have a lot of heart disease and cancer of the colon. And we've looked at see if there's the incidence of these diseases is less in vegans. And we've looked for various risk factors associated with these diseases. And we found that vegans are probably less prone to get heart disease and cancer of the colon than meat eaters. Um, how about animal fats being necessary for brain development? Uh, this is not true. Uh, a theory was put forward based on experiments with carnivorous cats and they made the mistake, which a lot of research people do, of applying animal experiments directly to man. Well, we've looked to see whether these animal fats are necessary in vegans and we've measured various things in the blood and we found that vegans can synthesize these special fats from plant fats and evidence for this is also supplied by the development of uh, Vegans, people who've been vegans for, for life, their mental development is quite normal, their educational attainment is, is generally quite high. Um, what would you say was the relevance of veganism to the world food problem? Uh, I think it's very important when you consider developing countries are suffering from overpopulation and food shortage. Now, in these countries, uh, foreign agencies, uh, FAO and the US, AID and other such groups are encouraging uh, these countries to increase livestock production. Now in countries where the grain situation is critical, feeding grain to animals, which are very inefficient converters of food, it takes 10 pounds of grain to make one pound of meat, is the same as snatching grain from the people's mouths. This is Serena Coles, one of our vice presidents. She's been a member almost from the beginning of society and she's a medical social worker. Tell us something of your experience. Well, I became a vegetarian in 1943 during the difficult days of the war. And in those days we knew nothing about B12 or many of the other things that we now have. Uh, soon afterwards I realized that I wanted to become a vegan because I suddenly knew that so much cruelty was involved with dairy produce. And I believe you also brought up a son as a vegan. Yes, my son was born in 1945 and I maintain, rightly or wrongly, that this was partly because I had improved so much in my own health that I was able to conceive. So that was the medical point of view. Also, nutritionists at the Queen Elizabeth College, University of London, are just about to publish a very favourable report on the health of vegan children. Now let's see what vegan families think. By the way, pulses mean peas and bees. I'm a life vegetarian. Uh, the family dislikes slaughter for food, which is why we're vegetarian. And when we realised the cruelty involved in producing meat and eggs, we decided to become vegan as well. Philip had been vegan for vegetarian for most of his life and decided to become vegan when we met. Yes, for many years I tried to carry the courage of my convictions to veganism, but I was anxious about uh, anemia and lack of vitamin B12. But I needn't have worried about that. 
Um, one day I was vegetarian, the next I was vegan. And it didn't bother me a bit. Becoming a vegan is like shedding a, a very heavy, unwanted overcoat. It's a great relief when you go into a supermarket and you're able to bypass so many food counters. And that relief is extended uh, mentally when you realize that you're no longer involved in battery food production. It's surprising how many people have said to us, are you going to bring the children up as vegans? And of course we are. We feel it's the best food for us and for them too. There's nothing puritanical about it. We enjoy the vegetables, fruits, nuts, pulses, all the things we eat, and we give them to the children because they're the best things for them. There's nothing restrictive about it. And we feel really fit because it's so free mentally. We have a clear conscience about it. Obviously, we like the children to grow up in our philosophy, but uh, as they do come in contact with the general society, pressure will be put on them to give consideration to a meat diet. But the point is that they'll be able to choose for themselves, and we'll at least have given them the experience of uh, living without any animal products whatsoever. The health clinic where I take the children are very happy with their progress. They're normal, healthy children. I started them off as breastfed babies. I feel breast milk is best for humans, cow's milk is best for calves, and it all went well for us. They take all the food that we have, all the vegetables, fruits, nuts, nut meats, pulses, anything, very happily, and as you can see, they're growing and developing very well. Uh, many children, um are adverse from the start uh, to eating meat. They either dislike the texture of it, sometimes the smell, or the taste of it. Um, but we find that with these children, uh, they accept everything gladly, and they enjoy all the marvelous different foods that we can produce without um, resource to animal uh, food whatsoever. You have to learn how to be a vegan in society. These children will have to learn how to cope socially. It's our job to teach them to do it. But we feel sure the benefit to them to be given the chance to live without causing cruelty for food will be welcomed by them and we hope they'll have a happy life. My name's Harold Bland and this is my wife Jenny and our baby daughter Rosemary who is 10 months old. We've been vegan now for 10 years and of course the baby is a life vegan. We find that our vegan diet keeps us perfectly healthy. We can pursue all our outdoor activities that we used to with just as much interest. We go cycling, camping, canoeing, walking, all those sort of things. And we find that we can carry on our business lives and working lives uh, aided by the vegan diet. And we find we enjoy our lives even more than before because we find we have a, a clear conscience about the things we eat and do. Now to the table and the kitchen. Don't you find vegan food rather boring, Jenny? Well, we were very worried about that too uh, when we turned vegan. But we soon found it became very interesting as we found lots of new possibilities to try out. And we also found it became very much cheaper. Do you spend much time preparing your food? Well, uh, with a small baby, and I also teach, and I do the gardening, I don't get much time. I do bake all our own bread, and I don't use convenience foods, but I still find I don't spend very much time at all preparing it. Is it very difficult? Do you have to be a very good cook? No. You can see by looking at the recipe books that we've got that it is really very easy. And there's one called First Hand, First Rate, which really lives up to its name, and uh, is biased towards locally grown foods. This one has got a recipe for vegan cheese, which we found all our friends who, who eat cheese normally, they're very fond of it. Harold, you've been looking up the question of comparative yield of different food crops. Do you really think that you can grow enough plant food to feed a vegan population? Well, yes. The vegan diet is extremely economical in terms of land usage. If we take, for example, the protein yield per acre of wheat and beef and allow for what we call the biological factor, 
we found that wheat yields ten times as much as beef. Milk is a little better, but wheat still yields three times as much as this. Now various foods give different comparison figures, but and some can be as high as 30 times. Now with an average of 10 times the food from our fertile areas, Britain could become self-sufficient in food. Now if we look at the world food production, we found that nearly 50% of the world's grain harvest is fed by animals, which return only about one-tenth to the plate. This means that nearly 40, over 40% 40 of the world's grain is being wasted. And this is in a world where malnutrition is rife. This is Kathleen Janaway, Secretary of the Vegan Society. Uh, Kathleen, <coughs> some say that animal manures are necessary for the health of the soil. I know people say so, but there's no real reason to back their statement, no research. Hundreds of gardens like my own grow excellent crops with no artificials, no animal manure, nothing except vegetable compost made from vegetable wastes. After all, animal manure is only plants passed through animals. I pass plants through my compost bins instead. All the inedible bits of fruits and vegetables go in layers in these bins. I cover them, I'm sorry, I cover them with layers of weeds sprinkling of herbal activator and in six or twelve weeks you get marvelous compost that grows excellent crops last year we had 200 weight of tomatoes from this garden lots of beans giant cucumbers and many other crops all grown from vegetable compost. Why use artificial fertilizers that can do damage to the soil structure and life and cost irreplaceable fossil fuel to make? Why use animal manure when animals need so much land and work to support them when you can get good crops with just vegetable waste, earthworms, bacteria that live in small bins? And as for doing it on the wider scale of the farm, why should it be more difficult than cutting grass for hay and silage? Anyway, if England turned vegan, we'd need so much less land to produce food. We'd have wide acres for forests and wildlife and recreation. At the moment, 90% of the agricultural land of England goes to support animals. If we are going to feed people, we have just got to stop breeding these pathetic creatures. The Sahara Desert and many other deserts have been produced by bad farming methods. In the time of Christ, the Sahara was mostly covered with flourishing forests. <clears throat> Bad farming, that is chopping the trees down, overgrazing with herds of cattle, exhausting the soil, and then moving on, has produced this desert condition. By reversing this process in our time, by using trees properly, almost any kind of soil can be made to grow good food. Trees not only provide food for us, but they provide shelter for many other smaller crops. And shelter belts are necessary in a balanced agriculture. And trees should be included in all schemes for food growing.
Not only that, but they provide a source of recreation for mankind. Now a vegan culture is a tree culture. Rain sweeps down bare hillsides carrying precious topsoils into the rivers causing floods. Rain drips through trees and soaks through fallen leaves to maintain underground waters. And think what trees give us. Maximum food per acre, soil fertility, oxygenated air, timber for fuel, building, paper, clothing, etc. They ease use of non-renewable fossil fuels and fertilizers. Now in the studio we have Bill Wright, a naturopath. Bill, tell us about naturopathy and veganism. My own experience of my own ill health as a child led me out of the maze of medical drugs towards health building foods. Ever since I started a vegan diet, trying this and trying that, my health has steadily improved. My experience of other people's ill health, working as a naturopath and helping people wean themselves off drugs with whole fresh plant foods, convinces me and all those that try eating this way that there's no better way of lasting good health. The health building qualities of this kind of food lies in the fact that the food elements are readily acceptable to the body unlike animal foods which can cause harmful side effects. Anyone who wants to start this way of life, I would recommend a careful approach with the help of literature from the Vegan Society. Yes, and we'll give you our address later. Harry Bonney, you are an ex-boxer, a parachute jumper, and still at 50-something of an athlete. You are a blood donor, an entertainer, and a supporter of many good causes. Tell us what you think of the vegan way of life. I've been a vegan for more than 14 years and I can honestly say I've never felt fitter or more relaxed. I stopped drinking milk when I learned of the cruelty inflicted on cows and their calves. Let's face it, Erica, cow's milk is for calves, not for humans. Yes, and we have other athletes in our society too, like Jack McClelland, a wrestler, footballer and cross-channel swimmer, and they all agree that milk is a baby food, not fit for strong men. Eva Bat, Eva is chairman of our vegan council. Tell us, Eva, how you became a vegan. I remember very clearly, Erica, although well, it was nearly 20 years ago, there was this railway station platform and there were some cows herded at one end and they were making a very pathetic noise. And at the other end were baby calves, very, very young, and they too were crying for the mother cows. And of course I asked an official, why couldn't they be put together? And he explained that the cows were going to market and the calves were going to the butcher. To the butcher, I said, why? Well, he said, you can't have milk unless cows keep having calves. And you can only rear a few of those cows as cows. Most of those other poor little things will be in veal and ham pies before long. This shook me. I hadn't realized that uh, milk production was responsible for all this suffering and slaughter. I had pictured placid, gentle cows happily grazing in green pastures and I thought how kind the farmers were to relieve them of their milk. I turned again to the cows because one was nudging my shoulder trying to attract my attention and as I turned she gazed straight into my eyes and there was a real message. That's the time it came through to me. I knew then I could never drink milk again and I hadn't. But believe me, I had a terrible time over that weekend just wondering how I was going to manage. I knew people could live well without meat, but without milk, I really thought I was going to die. So you can imagine how delighted I was when I discovered that there were other people who were living happy, healthy lives as vegans, thinking the way I did. And today, on my 68th birthday, I am feeling, I too, I should say, I'm feeling happier, healthier, and altogether 
better than ever before. eating the, the food of the vegans and I find it's much nicer than eating the dead bodies of animals. I like it because um, we don't have to kill the animals and eat them. I like it because um, we like the animals but we don't like to kill them so we don't eat the meat. And the suffering is so unnecessary because not only is vegan food adequate for health but it can be truly delicious and much cheaper. Now let's see what vegans eat. Well, of course, we eat a lot of vegetables and fruits. We eat nutritious savouries instead of meat and fish. We have desserts and cakes of all kinds, made, of course, with vegetable fats, without eggs and milk, and this is cheaper too. We have wholemeal bread, and we have a vegan substitute cheese, which is very quick and easy to make, sliceable, cookable, and very easy to keep. For all these dishes, you will find clear recipes in our cookery book, What's Cooking, by Eva Batch. There is a creamy plant milk, and we have kind of milkshakes. We have vegan convenience protein foods, which are obtainable at all good health shops and some other shops too. Once we have got used to the changeover, we really do not miss animal products. Thank you, Erica. If you would like recipes or more information about other aspects of veganism, the address of the Vegan Society is 47 Highlands Road, Leatherhead, Surrey. I will repeat that. 47 Highlands Road, Leatherhead, Surrey. Telephone, Leatherhead 72389. Let us stop <coughs> killing. Let us grow more trees instead. Why not join us in the green revolution? The bloodless revolution. Right. Right, I told you. Yeah.